It's another soaking for the 2016 harvest at Eton inland of Mackay. But cane growers like Jerry Deguara are well skilled in dealing with the vagaries of Mother Nature in Queensland's tropics. Jerry and his sons Joe and Sam are cutting cane for the racecourse mill. And this is their best season in more than a decade. It's no surprise, given the family's long-term commitment to farming innovation. I know the crop's good, that's the best crop we've had in years. Mackay sugar in general, it's, it's gone as low as 60 tonne the hectare and I'm hoping it should be well over 80 tonne the hectare this year as an average and it's been our best crop since 1998 I'd say. On days like today the controlled traffic system they've installed on their farms really demonstrates its worth. Harvesting after rain is when the risk of soil compaction caused by machinery is at its highest. But with the harvester and the haul-out tractor under GPS guidance, the machinery keeps to an exact path on a firm inter-row area, which is covered by a blanket of cane trash. Uh, this is our farming system we've adopted. It's based on two metre uh, wheel tracks with 0.6 metre rows on the bed. Um, we've selected this because it's sort of maximised our harvesting width. And uh, we, when we harvest this paddock, it was quite damp. So as you see where I'm standing, there's a bit of compaction, but the beds where the cane grows is untouched. And that's the whole aim of it. That is control traffic. Over the course of a decade, all farm machinery, including the harvester, has been modified to suit the row spacing. Less compaction in the plant zone means better growing conditions. And a dual row system with vehicles guided by GPS means fewer machinery movements reducing fuel costs and boosting productivity. We started in uh, early 2000 on, and we selected a two metre system and uh, we grew cane on 0.8 metre rows and then 0.7. We're on 0.6 metre rows now. The, you know, that's really irrelevant. It's just the wheel track spacing. We've stuck to that. Some of the fields, we've got them on the third crop cycle on the same wheel tracks. You know, for all these reasons that, you know, it's got to be a robust system. We can take this wet weather, it's got to be able to take the dry weather, it's got to be able to reduce costs, which it has. With Mackay on the doorstep of the Great Barrier Reef, the controlled traffic minimal till system is delivering an important environmental dividend. Coupled with trash blanketing, the practice of establishing firm machinery tracks and only cultivating a narrow plant zone means the risk of sediment, nutrient and chemical leaving the farm when it rains is minimised. Jerry de Guara is in no doubt it's a vast improvement on the industry's old methods of intensive cultivation. We're beyond doing trials, we've been going this long now, this is our system and you know it might change in the future but probably not while I'm around, I, I hope you know it'll stay like this. It will only be to a better system but we'll never go back to how we were. It was a disaster and we used to when we'd have these rainfall events on metre and a half rows and heavy machinery bogging them all up. Now we can go there and the tyres can sink a little bit but we've pre preserved the growing area, the stool, it's not compacted. As well as racing the clock to finish the cane harvest, today Sam is binning out a crop of a different kind. The grain header is loaded with mung beans from a neighbouring farm. Their beans destined for the market where they could fetch a nice price. We rely on the soybeans as a cash crop. And you know, last couple of years we've been getting around the you know three ton the hectare, and the prices range anywhere from four hundred dollars a ton to you know eight hundred dollars a ton, and so they've been a good cash crop. A lot of the work you do for it, you have to do it for any year as part of a fellow program, and we're finding we, well we rely on that money. We've bought a decent header to do the job, and we do a bit of contracting for other people. So we've got everything, and we've built some storage. So we've got everything in place to keep doing it without being a real, you know, annoying part of your life. Fallow cropping with legumes has become an essential element of the farming system because the nitrogen they put into the soil helps address the industry-wide issue of yield decline the way that nature intended, with soybeans in summer and chickpeas in winter. Oh, well, this, this block here is at the end of it. it it's, it's been a two metre system for two crop cycles. And uh, traditionally, you know, we used to either burn the trash or work it all in. But now we've decided to just um, rake the trash into the wheel track. And it's also, it, rather than burning it, it also serves a purpose. It stops erosion in the wheel tracks and, and conserves moisture for the soybeans. Ultimately, we'd like to plant straight through the cane stools and trash and everything. But uh, we're having a few issues with planters. 
and how it is now we rake the trash off and follow through with a rotary hoe that's only rotary hoeing 1.2 metres of the 2 metre bed just very shallow just to break the stew a little bit and then we're ready for the soybeans. The yield decline joint venture there's enough proof around that growing legumes in your fallow does improve soil health and you get the nitrogen and, and you know I think there's enough science around us to, to believe that you know the more different crops you can put in the better it is for the biology of the soil. On average the Deguaras fallow 20% of the farm each season. But with this harvest running late, time is running out to get the normal quota of soybeans planted. Experience has shown the crop needs to be established before February and there's a big incentive to plant beans if time allows. I've probably gone beyond doing trials on it, you know, like I mean that's just become our whole system and we, we don't do trials with it anymore, you know, like we sort of assume that we're doing the, the right thing. So, I have this farm here when well and truly average over 100 tonnes a hectare, you know, and we, we think we're on the right track, you know, and you know, I'm not trying to preach to anyone, but I mean, the science is there, we only listen to people, the science was there for it. Keeping up with science and innovation is a matter of survival in one of the world's most environmentally sensitive and high cost cane growing regions. One of the bigger input costs for farmers inland of Mackay is irrigation. Water is supplied to their farms by channels linked to Sunwater's Kinchin Dam. The Deguaras have invested heavily in low-pressure centre pivot irrigation systems, just another area where the family is keeping up with industry best practice. Helping drive innovation is the Australian Government Reef Program. It's giving farmers like the Deguaras access to partial funding for new technology. Technology that delivers environmental outcomes and productivity gains at the same time. I think the challenge for a lot of people is the mindset on, you know, going away from, we've never ever had issues with that, we've always been happy to change. Um, it's always been a financial thing, buying GPSs. Uh, and luckily there's been, you know, funding around to partially buy GPS units and shielded sprayers and all that good innovation and we haven't finished yet and constructing tailwater drains, uh, dams and you know we've been fortunate in the fact that there has been some money getting around for growers to bring about the change and and we've you know I don't mind admitting we've grabbed every bit we can like I mean that's that's why you know we still would have got there but we'll get there a lot quicker with the funding you know. Jerry Deguara believes it's a situation of the economic driver and the environmental driver measuring up. Cane growing methods that benefit the Great Barrier Reef also benefit the farmer's bottom line. And that's a great outcome for everyone. I'm quite confident everything we've done has gone a long way to help in the environment and, you know, all things being equal, we think we can really minimise what goes into them gullies and creeks and ocean. I think we can minimise all those things. And it's been probably the most economical way of doing it also. That's, that's the best part of it.